Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Manette. I am Dr. Manette Riordan getting going here on YouTube and on Facebook. So bear with me for a couple of seconds while we get that Facebook Live. Also started watching the little spinny wheel this morning. All right, so welcome. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette, and this morning is Painting in Your PJs live in my Christmas pajamas because they are so warm and so soft. I'm probably going to wear them all year round, at least until it's too warm to wear them anymore. I am super excited about today's topic. It's one that I end up really talking to so many women about and most of the women in my programs that come especially your midlife renaissance my year-long group coaching program come because they're seeking purpose they've reached a point in their life where they feel like good morning carol good morning yvonne where they feel disconnected from their sense of self and from their sense of purpose and i've been doing a lot of Good morning, Becky. Welcome, welcome. I've been doing a lot of thinking and reading and studying and sharing in my Midlife Renaissance program about this idea of purpose and what does purpose really mean and how can we define it and do we need to? Why do we put so much pressure on ourselves to have this sort of one sense of purpose? So what I want to do today is sort of sketch note style, because I'm a little obsessed with sketch noting, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute if you don't know. I want to talk about my definition of purpose and kind of map out creatively my multiple purposes in different areas of my life. But before we dive in, I just want to say welcome. If you're brand new here, whether you're joining me live or catching the replay, thank you. Thank you for being here. I so appreciate you. Excited to see this channel continue to grow as we're stepping into our second full year of painting in your PJs. And if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to click that subscribe button. And if you click the little notifications bell, you will get notified when I go live. And those likes, you guys, they help me a ton when you click like on the videos, if you like them, only if you like them. It helps other people really get that these are videos worth watching. And what you can expect if you're new here is not a lot of sort of step-by-step -step tutorials, but more sort of stream of consciousness, talking, sharing my own creative practice and showing how I use my art as a tool for self-discovery and personal growth, which are two of my favorite topics. I've been reading, studying and teaching this stuff for about 30 years now. I think I got really interested in the late 80s when I was in grad school, starting with books like Shakti Gawain's Creative Visualization. All right, let's go ahead and switch the camera here. So what we're going to do is have some fun. Good morning, Leslie, with a little bit of sort of sketch noting style. You can see there's some of everything in the in the journal that I have been working on. And a couple of days ago, we did this fun exercise and identity map, which was about interest and values and things that I believe in with my silly little, <coughs> excuse me, cartoon drawing of me. Yes, I'm still coughing. I know it will come to an end at some point. So I want to continue in this type of sketch noting style. I'm exploring this style because I'm thinking about tackling it for the 100 day project, but I haven't fully committed yet. And I'll talk more about the 100 day project another day. But that illustration style is really, really appealing to me. I love the simplicity of it and the way that we can use it to sort of organize information in our mind. But today, what we're going to talk about is purpose. And if we ask the question, what is purpose? I don't think there's a simple answer. I love Eric Maisel's approach where he says we have many life purposes, but our main life purpose is to live a meaningful and values led life. I talk a lot about core values on this show and in all of my 
programs as well. And if you haven't thought about core values in a while, good morning, good morning. Um, I think it's always important at least once a year to review those values to see what's up for you because when we live a values-led life it becomes easier to make decisions and choices to not get overwhelmed but to live life in alignment with those values so when I think about what is purpose for me purpose is really about who am I being in the world it's not always my mission right? My mission is what am I doing, right? This is the, the action that I'm carrying out. But at the level of purpose for me, it's about being and belief. And we talked about belief the other day and what really matters to us. And we can have multiple life purposes. So when it comes to my family, making sure my family is secure, loved, cared for, taking care of that's an important part of my life purpose. Connection is a big part of my purpose. Connection at every level of my being, connection with family and loved ones, connection with friends, connection with all of you in my community, deepening my connection with myself. And as one of the amazing women in my midlife renaissance program said yesterday connection with my environment with nature with my thoughts so one of my purposes is to always be present moment aware of the connections that i'm creating around me another purpose is to have the energy and the vitality to carry out my mission and my mission is more about education and supporting women to find the clarity that they need. So my professional purpose is about clarity and confidence. Good morning, Judy. So when I think about what is my heartfelt purpose, there's a lot of moving parts of this. So I started thinking this morning about how can I really start to kind of map all of these different ideas and beliefs that I hold and start thinking about what is most important as we come already to the very last week of the first month of a new year. And I do love the turn of a new year. January is my birthday month, right? There's a um, an ending and a beginning that allows me to reevaluate and reconsider. So when I think about this idea of a map, right? There's all different kinds of maps. Marion, I am thinking about you this morning. My lovely cup of coffee is sitting on my coffee warmer, warmer as we speak, saying warm while I'm over here chit-chatting away. So what I've been having fun with lately are creating some kind of, you know, visual maps, visual circles. So I've got this empty bucket. I, I store markers and tchotchkes and things uh, in these in my studio and I want to draw a circle and this is almost going to be a little bit like a wheel of life kind of concept but a mandala can be a type of map so my thinking this morning is that I want to visualize purpose in the different areas of my life and add some symbols and some journaling I think I'm going to add an aura just around the outside of this circle, give myself a little bit more space. And I think where we get stuck so often, especially in those towards the end of midlife and post-career retirement, and we feel like we've lost our sense of purpose. I think that we've lost our sense of relevance and contribution and we can get quite caught up in thinking that we have to have this huge enormous ideal. So some people might say that purpose is about world peace. Well, I personally am not responsible and I don't want to bear the burden of responsibility for creating world peace and yet I believe deeply that peace matters. So my, what's my part in that? In 
helping create a ripple effect towards peace. For me, that's the purpose, is finding what my part is. What is my calling? What is my vocation at this stage of my life? Now, I'm nowhere near retired yet, but I work with a lot of women who are. All right, so I'm going to kind of just eyeball the center point of my circle here. And I'm going to think about the categories that feel important important to me when I think about purpose. And purpose, again, remember for me is about who am I being in the world? How am I show, showing up? What am I holding as valuable and important? Not what am I doing? What am I doing comes later. And for me, doing is in the realm of mission. So I'm calling this sketch note style because it's going to be a combination of words and symbols that are going to visually capture and sort of map the information that I want to draw. And I'm a little obsessed with these circles right now. I think this is the third one in a, in a couple of days that I have drawn to represent mapping different kinds of information. So when I think about my life purposes, I want to think about some of those key topics and think about maybe how many are there. And actually, let's do that over here. So one of my life purposes is in the area of connection. Another one is in the area of education. Um, one of my life purposes is, I would say, vitality, like b being that energy out in the world. Um, one of my life purposes is in spirituality, my deepening my experience and connection to something larger than myself. And education is twofold for me, right? There is learning and there is teaching. I have been a teacher my entire professional life, no matter what I was doing, I was always seeking ways to share and teach other people. One of my areas of purpose is creativity. Five is an odd number for a circle. So I'm like, okay, is there one more here? So connection for me covers family, community, self, <clears throat> spirit, environment. I think I could probably do a whole wheel about how important connection is to me. And these are all very intimately connected to what I would say my core values are. Connection, knowledge, health and wellness, spirituality, creativity, and... Uh, Let's see, connection, education, vitality, huh? So one of the purposes that I think that I am learning in this life is fun. I think it would be important to put fun on here as an area of life purpose. And again, I'm kind of going with this idea that Eric Maisel talks about, about really our ultimate purpose is to live a meaningful values-led life. If that's my purpose, then my actions are going to guide that. And everything that I want to do this year, who I want to be, how I want to walk on this planet needs to come back to these core things that are valuable to me personally. And if I have at the center of this map, this idea of, I was going to say peace, but for me, I think it would be love. If my purpose on this planet is to lead in love, to be loved, to feel love, to accept and receive love, my personal belief is that we, if we all truly loved our neighbors, the, the world would be a lot better place. And it would be a place of peace if we all really loved ourselves and loved our neighbors, it would be a much different world. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to eyeball this. It's not going to be fancy. 
but I'm going to divide this into six slices of pie here. So I'm curious as you're thinking about your own life purpose, does it feel clear? Like at this point in my life, I'm so clear and I'm deeply, deeply grateful for that clarity because that certainly hasn't always been true. A few years ago when I was still only working as a business coach, I really felt disconnected from my business and I felt like uh, I had really lost that sense of purpose. I wasn't loving what I was doing. I wasn't loving where I was living. I didn't feel like I had the the community support that I wanted and my business was successful. It was going really well, but it wasn't fulfilling me at the level of purpose. And it took me a couple of years to really sort of pinpoint what it was that was missing. So we've got connection, vitality, spirituality, creativity, education, and fun. <coughs> and I think what needs to go at the center is love. And if you had to pick that one thing that drives all the other things you do, what would that thing be? It's another way to kind of think about all of this, right? Another way to think about all of this. So I'm gonna come in with a black pen and I'm just gonna go over my pencil lines and I'm gonna switch to working with a pen so I'm not just smearing that black ink all over myself. And that one is a little more dried out than I would like. Let's try something fatter here. I think I said this the other day, I'm at that point where I need to uh, go through all of my pens because everything feels a little bit dry. So I'd be curious to hear other thoughts, opinions, ideas about this feeling of purpose and what does purpose mean to you? So I have my definition is not the only definition. And as an artist and creative, so many of us are what ha have, have been called or termed multi-potentialites. There's a great TED talk by a young woman about what it means to be a multi-potentialite, which means that we have many interests as well as many areas of knowledge and expertise. It means that we're not meant for one purpose or one career. I've always envied those people that had, you know, such clear sense of purpose and profession that carried them, you know, throughout much or most of their life. I've always been interested in so many different things, but when I really sit and look at the threads that connect everything that I've done, whether it was my field of study in university, whether it's the jobs that I had or the businesses that I've owned, there are two things that are at the core of absolutely every single thing that I've done my whole life. And even all the way back to childhood, you can see the threads of that, and that's creativity and education. I have been a voracious reader and lover of knowledge since the day I could hold a book. I have been creative in most of my endeavors from the very beginning, visual arts, the written arts. So these two things are the threads of my purpose. So if you're feeling curious or a little bit lost about this idea of what is my purpose, look back at childhood. 
for the origin of those threads, which is one of the things that we're going to be exploring in the Secret Garden Workshop, which comes up the second weekend in February, the 9th, 10th, and 11th. There's a link in the description of the video to go check out this three-day mini live course inspired by one of my favorite girlhood novels, The Secret Garden. And we're gonna be doing a lot of intuitive collage work and journaling work in that class to really connect with the aspects of the characters that represent aspects of our inner children because we have more than one aspect of the inner child within. But for me, the origins can be found, me with my head in a book, me outside riding my horse and exploring my neighborhood, me playing teacher. And in fact, as I'm, you know, talking through this, I realize that this isn't quite the, the right word, that the word that feels uh, better and more true to who I am and what I want to have be part of my heart's desire map here is adventure, right? Adventure, exploration. I love that, Carol. Haven't thought of having a purpose, but rather a way of being, right? And when we're focused on ways of being, it leads to purpose. It leads to an intentional way of living our life, right? And being in out in the world. So I'm thinking I want to have some fun here with a little bit of some of those cartoon sketch note style drawings. Um, and I'm thinking about adventure and it has, it was really cold and gray here. So my hubby and I went to the gym and I got on for the first time, sort of a Peloton style bicycle and did this sort of adventurous ride through the woods. And even though I was in the gym, it brought a little sense of adventure to my exercise for the day. So it's a way of living out that purpose. Saturday, a girlfriend and I are going off to explore uh, some uh, artsy resale shops that sell, you know, lovingly used art supplies. That's an adventure. Every time I sit and do an intuitive collage to explore my inner being, that's adventure. But I'm kind of thinking about, I do love bike riding. So let's do just a quick sketch note here of a bicycle. And I have been practicing a lot of these fun little symbols for a few years now. And I think I mentioned the other day my, uh, okay, my friend Robin Marie has been for months already talking about, you know, ideas for the 100 day project, which the date was just announced, the 100 day project starts on February 18th this year. And so I'm thinking about, you know, what am I going to do this year for that 100 day project? Okay, she's not big enough to get her legs down there. I love drawing stick figures. I think it's, they're very fun. They're a really sort of just fun, simple way to capture our day or to capture, you know, things that are happening. For me, riding a bicycle is a really fun way to see new areas and territory and explore. I've always wanted to maybe do one of those, um, bicycling trips through Provence, right? A, a different way to see and experience the countryside. So this bicycle is going to represent adventure for me, right? So we don't always have to have a lot of words to explore or describe what it is that we're doing. 
And when I think about connection, I think about a couple of different things. I think about hearts and I think about hands. Um, I think about, you know, chain links as representations, visual representations of connection. And I'm curious, I'd love to hear in the chat if you're still watching or just joining us. When you think of your own purpose, what do you think of? What do you think of? And when oftentimes we go into retirement, that purpose shifts. Like if you were an educator for 30 or 40 years, or you were a, uh, I had one client who was an audiologist for 20 years, 25 years, and she wanted the work that she was doing to Hilly Provence, my speed is more like the Netherlands, flat, flat, flat. Yes, flat would be awesome, Marion. She wanted to still feel relevant. She wanted to feel like she was making a contribution and that the work, the artwork that she was doing was meaningful and intentional and not random and disconnected. So when there's all different ways to think about our own connection with self as well as our connection with the outer world. So what I'm thinking here for connection is maybe just some hands holding this heart. So I'm holding my own heart, right? Lightly holding the hearts of others, sort of that interconnectedness of all things here. One of these days I'm gonna practice drawing hands, but it's not gonna be today. So connection is another thing that's on my list of my heart's desires. So when I understand how I want to feel and who I want to be, then that's going to drive my actions, right? That's going to drive my actions. Vitality, right? I want to feel strong, alive, healthy, fit. I want my body and my heart to be healthy, but I also want my mind and my spirit and my emotions to be healthy and energetic. And if you know me, um, even a little bit, I'm a pretty high energy person. And when I'm not, something's out of alignment. It could be the food I'm eating, I'm not getting enough exercise. It could also be I'm not spending enough time resting, right? Resting. So what <clears throat> vitality feels like is perhaps standing arms open wide to greet the day and I'm hoping we get some sunshine today Does anybody have any questions about purpose? So if you're not familiar with sketchnoting, what sketchnoting, the concept of sketchnoting is sometimes called graphic recording or even just uh, sketch journaling or daily illustration. It is a way to capture information visually with symbols and icons often used for note taking or at big conferences people will do a big graphic recording of thoughts and beliefs. What I love about it as a sort of morning pages practice is that when I connect visually to my thoughts through imagery and symbolism, I often get more to the truth of something and the core of something than I do with a whole bunch of words. If I sit down and write three pages of notes, uh, morning pages style, it can be sometimes rambling, I can go around in circles, I can get really stuck, but when I pause and add some color 
and a few symbols, then I connect with that information a little bit um, differently. Yeah, purpose is so important. The satisfaction that comes from meaningful interaction and activities is vital, right? And and I love that the core of that is meaningful interaction and activities, making sure that things are meaningful. And we spend so much time wasting our time, um, frittering away the time. Sometimes I find myself, myself puttering in the studio for hours sort of aimlessly and sometimes that aimless wandering is valuable and sometimes it's because I don't have clarity or I haven't set an intention for the day. So when it comes to spirituality, wow, there's so many things that I could put in this space, a deck of oracle cards, a cross, a candle, Um, but what is at the core of my own connection to spirituality is my relationship with nature. So one of the things that is I'm feeling is my deep connection to the mountains and the rocks. I'm reading this really beautiful book right now. In fact, Marion, you especially, I think, would really appreciate it. It's called Rooted. And I'm going to put a moon in this one because I have been really paying attention to the cycles of the moon. It's actually a full moon day today. So the book is called uh, Rooted, the Interconnection of Nature, Science, and Spirituality. And it's part memoir, part story, part science, beautifully written and there was a whole chapter on wandering and the value of wandering and to me that was um, such a good reminder to allow ourselves the um, opportunity to wander aimlessly and to not have to always be making an effort to be you know, productive, right? And to work so hard to always be, okay, this is me with my lecky walking pole here. Like not everything has to have a, a purpose and an intention, right? Get a little backpack on here. So being out in nature, is a big part connecting to the cycles of the moon, Um, reading and studying, being in circle with others that, you know, have shared interest and beliefs are all part of my personal spirituality. Awesome. I'm so glad, Judy. It's, um, it is a, a lovely, lovely read. All right. Creativity. So again, there's an absolute bazillion things that I could put in here. And I'm thinking maybe a sketchbook. and a jar of brushes and pens are the tools of my trade. And the reason that I love this idea of sketch noting is we are visual thinkers first before we are verbal from childhood how we learn how we see how we remember is through symbol and imagery our mother's face some music sound is important also and when we as we grow and you know we're taught to to read and write very very important you know literacy is i've talked about before is such a important 
topic to me and there's something about really understanding the impact of symbol on us that's so helpful and we complain that we can't find the words well forget about the words and seek the most iconic symbol right seek that most iconic symbol so creativity education so this one could easily be a stack of books or a whole library full of books but for me it's two part it also part of my purpose is sharing what I know a big like the probably driving force in my life is about taking information in and then sharing that information with others whether that's visually through art through the written word or through my voice <clears throat> and you know that might look something like me standing in front of a circle of people I could have drawn a zoom screen because so much of the teaching that I do is on zoom so just a very simple representation of me teaching and what I love about sketch noting is how effortless it is for me then to really come back to this map at any point in time and go this is the core of my heart's desire this is who I want to be this is how I want to live and these are the activities that I want to spend my time <clears throat> excuse me that I want to spend my time creating value for myself and others <clears throat> all right so I'm gonna come back with my black and I'm gonna do some outlines on these I want to add some color and then for fun I'm probably gonna come in and add some zentangle patterns around the outer edge of this as well <clears throat> has anybody else ever spent any time exploring sketch noting as a way of capturing and documenting information it's a great way it's right up there for me with mind maps and in fact you know I can uh, often incorporate sort of the sketch note idea into my mind mapping and when so my husband and I hosted a podcast a number of years ago that was all about productivity for artists and creatives it was a really fun thing that we did and it was when I learned how to do sketch noting is as we were interviewing people on the podcast I would create show notes for each episode that were sketch note style with words and symbols and it was such a fun practice and then I mentioned earlier this year uh, about uh, an artist named Anne Luke she calls it sketch journaling and she uses it as a way to record her days and her thoughts and that's kind of what reawakened my personal interest in sketch noting or sketch journaling. And the other reason that I'm thinking so much about this is as I continue to think about my book and the ideas for my book become more and more clear. I'm thinking I want my book to be sketch note style and more illustrations and fewer words. I'm a very wordy girl, in case you haven't noticed, and I appreciate the value of the visual and my other books have been, you know, very wordy. And the words 
aren't there and flowing in the same way the last couple of years as my art has, my visual art. So I'm looking like my intuitive sense is I need to approach the writing of this book in a very different way than I have my other books. My other books, I literally just, I had the ideas and I sat down and they just flowed. Make that oval a little smaller in there. And they just flowed. And this one isn't flowing yet. So I'm thinking that I might use that 100 day project and sketch noting as a way of daily personal recording, but also as a way to write my book. So that's my thinking. And when I've done the 100 day project, when I did it last year, I did not, I need a pencil on here. I did not share all 100 days live or, you know, the days that I'm live because I felt like it would be boring. But I'm curious if I did 100 days of sketch noting, would you want to see that or do you like more of the the variety? Yeah, absolutely, um, Carol. Ju Judy, I'm glad you love the concept. There's lots of great videos. There's um, lots of great, and the first thing is just to practice drawing the icons before you, and, and they are so simple. Sketch notes are intended to be very simple. This is not about um, formal illustration style. It's about icons and symbols that represent things. So I have journals that are full of just um, drawing stick figures in different shapes or practicing, you know, drawing different kinds of icons till it kind of becomes a little bit more uh, muscle memory, right? Muscle memory. My husband also yesterday suggested that I at least once a quarter do a longer Saturday morning session like we did on New Year's Day. So I'm also thinking about what that might look like to do some longer, longer sessions. I do love the, the painting marathons because it gets me painting. I think what I also love about the, the sketch noting is it feels playful and childlike. That there's something about it that, you know, just feels very, very fun. So this is a beautiful example of mapping my heart's desires of having a visual that I can come back to again and again when I feel out of alignment or when I don't know where to go next and I feel stuck in my thinking, I can always come right back here to this map and reconnect to my life purposes and what makes my life meaning. <laughs> Sometimes, Judy, but like when we left California now a couple of years ago, I threw so much of that old stuff away. Like I don't feel at all attached to or have any need to hold on to the past. So some of my favorite art journals or, you know, from classes that I've taught. So some of those I've kept, but I am pretty aggressive about getting rid of things because they are past. And what is so important to me, and it's funny because my husband and I have been talking a lot about this this week um, on our walks. 
about what's important to me is what's happening right now in the present. And so I use this, you know, any type of journaling or creative practice and creative process is about getting present with myself in the moment. And it's about consistent practice. So if you were to ask me what my secrets to success are, in life or in business, I would say number one is consistency, like showing up consistently for myself on the page, for my family, for my business, right? Consistency. And the other thing is that present moment awareness, which is challenging, right? It's challenging. And for me, the more that I consistently come to the page to connect with myself, right? And to connect with my version of spirituality and creativity, the more me I am. And it takes work and it's deeper than just a mindfulness practice. In fact, one of the sections in the rooted book that I thought was really fascinating. It was in the this section on wander was really about this idea put some little crescent moons in here was really about this um, new studies in mindfulness by John Cabot Zinn, who is kind of one of the godfathers of mindfulness based stress reduction therapy here in the United States. And I didn't realize that uh, before he became a mindfulness teacher, he's also a molecular biologist. But talking about rather than when we're sitting in meditation, trying to find the stillness and absence of thoughts, which many of us know is really challenging, but instead to follow our thoughts, to wander in our minds. And to me, that's something that creatives are so good at when we get out of our need to be productive and we remember that our best ideas often come when we allow our minds to wander and then we really see in new ways the interconnectedness of our ideas and our beliefs and our thoughts And so often for me, I love a walking meditation where my feet are wandering, but so is my mind. So is my mind. And sketch noting is a way for me to sort of visually capture or doing what I affectionately call a brain dump when my head is too full of ideas, letting myself just capture everything on paper, often really large sheets of paper as well. All right, let me get this big fat chunky pen going again. And I'm going to continue this just really classic Zentangle pattern here of Crescent Moon. Although as I'm drawing these little crescents, I'm thinking maybe what I really want is some henna drum around the edges would be really pretty. So as I take the time to add pattern and color to this map of my heart's desires, I pour more energy into it. I sit with the ideas. When we make things beautiful, we cherish them. They become even more meaningful. So I have been every night in my journal as I'm sitting watching TV with Brad. I have been doing one page of a sketchnote style capturing my day. Little things like the weather. Yesterday, Brad made a really delicious butter chicken. So I had a bowl of butter chicken on my page. I wrote down a list of things that I was grateful for. And for a long time, I've been wanting 
a different evening practice. I feel like my morning practice is really solid. <clears throat> but that my evenings were getting a little frittered away without a lot of focus and intention. I'm always working on something creative, often coloring a sacred circle from our sacred circles membership, or that's a lot of the time I'm practicing sketching. So last night I was practicing uh, drawing Judy for, um, so my, I'm going to do a visual journaling or nature journaling class for books in the woods for Allie's community. And so I was practicing sketching Massachusetts wildflowers last night. Tonight, I'm going to practice drawing Massachusetts birds, songbirds, that I will be bringing into my class. But I wanted something that was just to bring some meaning and closure to the end of the day. And I didn't want to, you know, just sit and write. And I'm loving having this evening sketchnoting practice. So Carol, I have been teaching this idea of doing a brain dump for probably 10 or 15 years. It was a big part of what I taught my creatives to do in my business classes, because especially as we get older, we have so much information in our heads. and we live in the information age right now where we're constantly being embar um, uh, bombarded with input and ideas and ads and you know not always useful information but as creatives we tend to hold ideas to-do lists and so what I encourage my clients to do is to get, and I love the great big cheap kids drawing pads, the big floor pads that you can get um, sometimes at the dollar store, but you know, like at Walmart or any office supply store, the great big just cheapy drawing paper and some colorful pens, although half the time I don't even use colorful pens, or I might only use one, and literally write down everything that's in your head all over a giant sheet of paper, and get everything that's in your head out, because once it's out on a giant piece of paper, then you can make decisions, you can see the connections, the redundancies, you can prioritize and let go of things. Oftentimes the problem is we're holding whole, <coughs> excuse me, holding whole projects in our heads instead of what's the first task or step that I need to take. And so when we get it out of our head and onto paper, we can see it. <coughs> All right, so I'm loving my little heart's desire map. I feel like it's coming together. I'm loving putting, you know, just some attention here on creating a beautiful space holder. And then once you've done this giant brain dump and you can see everything, then I encourage people to go from the brain dump to the more linear to-do list or plan. And it allows you to see things that you're holding in your head as to-dos that really you're never going to do, or maybe they're not yours to do. You'd be better off to get someone else to do it. But you can also see where you need to break things down into smaller bite-sized tasks. 
And it's such a powerful tool for really clearing and decluttering our minds. And this is where I can get lost in the mindful drawing and just taking my time to work my way around the circle to fill the page. And let's imagine that I was holding all of these ideas in my head and I did a brain dump of ideas and projects and to do's and tasks and dreams because we're always holding, you know, those important things that need to get done as well as those dreamy things we'd like to get done. One of the things I've been holding in my head lately is we have quite a bit of travel coming up uh, in April, May, and June, and it's time to start doing some planning and thinking about flights. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm holding that in my head, but I haven't written it on my to-do list yet. So it's just floating around, taking up space in my head that would be better used by something else. Judy, you want to say a little bit more about that? Or you can always reach out to me personally, and I'm happy to, to hop on a phone call. Is it the brain dump part or the heart's desire and really leaning in to what matters to you? <clears throat> so true, Carol. Judy, uh, so I'm so glad you're into this. That makes me super happy. I love this as well. Um, yeah, what matters, right? Yes. And we get busy, we get distracted, and we forget, right? We forget to come back to center. So I have no excuse. So now I can go in and do the giant brain dump and then I can come back and look at my heart's desire map and I can look at that brain dump and I can make different decisions. We oftentimes hold on to so much in our head that is a should. And Carol, as a daughter, of parents who have houses full of stuff. I'm so grateful you're thinking about that and about letting go of the crap, right? And it does, it makes you feel so much lighter for sure. But when we live our lives from the energy of our truest heart's desires, of our core values, it is emotional. It is emotional because it feels like it's connected to our value and to our worth and to the contribution that we're making out into the world. All right, I'm going to give this lovely some color. And traditionally, sketchnoting is done with very minimal color, with usually markers. There's these really cool markers. I think they're German that people use for big graphic recording stuff. But I have been, and they're uh, fairly monochromatic, like someone might use, especially for uh, bigger pieces, just a couple of colors. But I have really been enjoying taking my time with the colored pencil. Yes, Judy, the brain dump, and it's instead of a, a diary, right? And Or in addition to a diary, so that the writing that you do after a brain dump becomes more focused and intentional. And so I've been limiting the number of colors I've been using to color these, <clears throat> but not too much.
And then this almost becomes very much like a personal manifesto. In fact, from this place, I could write a manifesto about what I believe and about what matters. So again, I just want to get some little pops of color on here. Not every element has to be colored in. I love that, Carol. Yeah. <clears throat> My stepdad did that too. And his, uh, his favorite aunt that raised him had done that as well, where uh, had gone around the house with sticky notes and put labels on things that people wanted. And our challenge is between my mom's house, my dad's house, Brad's parents' house, there's a lot and none of us have space for it. Now in all of the families, there is so much art. And so the art, like my dad has beautiful um, Western art and uh, art from the Southwest that's just stunning so my brother and I want the art but you know we don't want the 14 sets of china and silver Just a few fun little pops of color. It doesn't need, again, it doesn't need a lot of color, but I'm really digging this limey green. Get some more of that green in here. And I'm feeling like the Zentangles around the edges either need some petals or leafy shapes, one something. And I think we need some little pops of blue in here and we'll call it done for now. So for me, sketch noting is visual thinking, right? Visual thinking. It's connecting to our innate love of symbol and icons. Oh, Carol, thank you so much. I love that. So glad that you're here. Oh, I, it's so much, right? Uh, Yvonne, I get that, a guilt trip, having to let it all go. We don't have, you know, home and space. Like I'm already holding on to one set of china for my my daughter um, from her namesake that was Brad's great aunt, another Margaret Emily, Aunt Peggy. And so, you know, we've been lugging this china around because she passed away, uh, I think after Connor was born, but before Maggie was born. So we've been lugging this China around cross country for multiple moves. And it does, it feels like a lot, a lot of weight being carried.
All right, so thinking about this idea of heart's desire and purpose rather than this idea of a singular purpose, a clear direction of I'm going to do this and only this, this heart's desire map shows my many life purposes, my intention and aim to live a life that is meaningful and values led. And if all I do every day is live in alignment with my values, that shows in everything that I do, in my connection with others, in my teaching, in my self-care routines. So I invite you to consider your own heart's desires and how do you want to live? How do you want to live? So my word of the year, my mantra from New Year's Day was, I am light, right? I am light. And so when I look at all of this and I think about if I approach all of this, if I don't hold anything too tightly, if I hold it all with light, I am the light, I'm shining the light, I'm being the light, I'm being guided by the light of love, it all starts to come together really powerfully. Letting it go is an incredible sense of freedom, Judy. Yep. Yeah. It does. When your kids don't want it, it makes it easier to let go for sure. All right, my friends, that is it for today. I'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time for one of our final January prompts. And uh, don't know what that will be, but um, it'll be fun, I'm sure. So I'm loving this sketch noting, and I'm missing my art journaling. So we'll see what I wake up feeling like tomorrow. But I would encourage each of you to create a simple map of your heart's desires. Have a beautiful, restful, and creative day, my friends. I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for joining me live. Thanks for watching the replay. Be sure to click that like button and uh, let me know what you thought. Bye, everybody.